Uh, welcome back. In this segment, uh, we're going to be taking our virtual machine that we created and using FDisk to partition the virtual machine. Uh, partitioning a hard drive is a very important thing to understand. Uh, when you buy your PC, unfortunately, it's not partitioned. You have one big, large hard drive uh, that's all dedicated to partition C where your operating system resides. When you go to save files, your files go into that one big C, and if you have a problem with your operating system where you have to replace it because it becomes unstable, corrupted, or infected, you lose all your important files unless you can back them up. I always suggest to everyone that we create a second partition. On that second partition, we put files that we don't want to lose, and we also back up our primary partition with our operating system. So in case it does become infected or corrupted or unstable, we can reinstall it very quickly using the image. And it only takes a few minutes instead of a few hours because we have a image that is the original uh, from our first installation. Saves a lot of time, a lot of work. Uh, back here, welcome to MS-DOS. And we're at the A prompt. I'm going to go ahead and type in FDisk. FDisk. This is utility in MS-DOS for setting up partitions. Hit enter. Uh, we get this little, your computer has a disk larger than 512 megs. Anything larger than 512 megs looks like a large disk to MS-DOS. Do you want to uh, go ahead and start this large disk support? Yes, I do. Otherwise, we would be limited to 2 gigs. Now, on our virtual machine, we created a 16 gig uh, virtual machine. So we're going to partition that now. Uh, MS-DOS opens up. Uh, first or current uh, fixed disk is disk 1. If you had more than one hard drive, it would appear here. It's the number 2, 3, and so on. Uh, we have four selections. Create DOS partition or logical do DOS drive. Uh, number 2, set active partition. Uh, 3, delete partition or logical drive. 4, display partition information. I'm going to go ahead and put a 4 in here and press Enter. Uh, right now you can see our fix, current fixed disk, uh, number one has no partition information. So we'll click or push escape to go back to that last menu. And this time we're going to create a DOS partition or logical drive. And it defaults to one, so we'll press enter. Now we have three more options. Create primary DOS part partition, create extended DOS partition, or create logical. We're actually going to use all three of these, but we'll start with number one. Create primary DOS partition. Press enter. It's going to do a little drive, uh, verify drive integrity. to Just make sure that this drive is able to support partitioning. And uh, it is. It's just a virtual drive or just a file. And it's almost done. Now, this is real important. It says, do you wish to use the maximum available size for a primary DOS partition? This is where you want to make sure you say no. Otherwise, you're stuck with one large partition, partition C, for the entire disk. So we're going to say no, click enter. It's going to do one more drive integrity check here. Goes pretty quickly since this is just a virtual, otherwise it would take quite a while because it's actually checking the disk's integrity. Now it's complete and we have 16,379 megabytes. Now, I only want to use a portion of this, so I'm going to just type in 8,000 and press Enter. Now I have a new partition, C. Uh, the status is still not active yet, so we have to do that. It's a primary DOS partition, and there's 8,001 megabytes or 8 gigabytes uh, dedicated to this, about half of the size of the disk. No label yet. I'll be uh, adding a label, too. Uh, press escape to continue. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and set this active. So I'm going to select number two, press enter. I only have one partition, so I'm going to put the one in here. Press enter. Now I have an A up here, so my status is active. This gives me a primary partition that's going to be become bootable. Otherwise, your disk wouldn't be bootable if you didn't have anything set active. Now press escape one more time. Uh, next, we're going to create a extended partition. So number one here again, press Enter. Uh, this time it's going to be an extended partition. So press 2, Enter. Uh, it's going to do a little verification again, drive integrity. Make sure we can 
set this up without any problems. And it's complete. We're going to use the rest of this uh, drive dedicated to this extended. Now, we could make this smaller and leave some unallocated space, but I'm going to go ahead and use the whole drive. Press Enter. Now I have a second partition. It's an extended partition, and it's 8,378, a little bit larger, about 8.3 8 or 8.4 gigs, and it's about 51% of the drive. So that's pretty good so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and press Escape, and it automatically knows that I'm going to need one logical drive because it says no logical drives defined yet. So let's do a little integrity check again. And I'm going to go ahead and use the rest of this space uh, for my one logical drive, drive D. Now, if I wanted to create a, uh, a E partition, I could take half of this and dedicate it to the D and then the other half uh, to the E. Or I could even add, add more if I'd like to. I'm going to go ahead and take this and press Enter. Now I have a logical drive, drive D, uh, 8,378 megabytes in this extended partition. That's using 100% of this extended. Uh, press Escape. Now I'm going to press the 4 because I want to look and see what I've done so far. And press Enter. Now you'll see I have two partitions. Partition 1, set active, and it's I primary. And there's about 8 gigs dedicated towards it. And I have a second partition, extended, and it has the 8 gigs. Now it's going to say, do you want to see your logical drive? So go ahead and press Enter. And we have one logical drive, drive D, uh, in that uh, uh, extended partition. I'll go ahead and press escape. We're going to come completely out of this because we're finished. In order for the computer to see these changes, we're going to have to go ahead and reboot uh, this virtual machine. To do that, go up to your actions, uh, control alt delete, and that will reboot. Uh, again, we're going to be booting to our ISO, ISO image so that we have a DOS operating system to work with. Now next, we want to format uh, this new partition. So I'm going to type format and it's going to be C and I want to add system files so this becomes bootable. Now this is the uh, switch uh, slash S. Now press enter and it's going to say do you really want to proceed with this? It's going to erase all the data. I'll say yes and it's going to take just a minute to format this because it's uh, just a file again not an actual physical hard drive but a logical hard drive that we've created in this virtual environment. So as it uh, continues to format here, once it finishes this, it will add the system files so that this can become bootable. And then it's going to ask me, do you want to uh, put a uh, label on this? And I'll add a label. I'll call it DOS. And right here where we can do that. D-O-S will be my label name. Press Enter. Now I have a new drive C that uh, I can go to. And if I type DIR, I can see what's inside this. I have a command com file, so I've got my system files in here, and I've got a new label on it called DOS. Now I still need to format. Uh, I'll go back to the A drive where my format command resides and type uh, format one more time. And this time I'm going to format the D drive. Press Enter and yes. And again, this will just take a minute to uh, format the second drive. Uh, once this is complete, I'm going to go ahead and release that ISO, the ISO image, the DOS image, and actually boot this to my new DOS operating system in my virtual environment. Okay, this is almost complete. Calculating free space. Once it's finished with that, it asks me if I want to put a label on here. And yes, this label is going to be called Backup. Press Enter. Now I have two partitions that are formatted so I can start putting files on. I'm going to go back up here and release my DOS ISO and reboot my virtual machine to see if it will boot into its own operating system. And it does. I get uh, Microsoft Windows 98. That's a DOS operating system. Drive C. So everything's gone. Everything's checked out fine. If later I'd like to add another operating system, I can do that. I can install Windows XP on drive D or make a drive E or whatever. Thank you very much for your time. This concludes this segment. Bye.